In this lesson, we're going to look at how to ask our tabular model to tell us what's not there, which is a little bit reversed. Normally, if we have data in a database, we're asking, what is there? Like, we might ask, what are the sales by customer for some subcategory that we've chosen? But we may be interested in comparing our customer behavior in one subcategory sales versus another subcategory sales. So we might want to know that if a customer has purchased something in one category, then what is their behavior like in another subcategory? This also isn't that hard to accomplish. We can just list out their sales in both subcategories and then compare the two. But what if we want something very specific? We want to know for customers who have purchased something in one sub subcategory, which of them have purchased nothing in a second subcategory? Of course, through brute force, we can get to this as well. We can just list out all of the sales for all of the customers in every category and start comparing. But what if we want a more elegant solution where we just generate an exception list that answers exactly question three? And that's what we're going to look at in this lesson. The data model we'll look at is AdventureWorks, which is downloadable from CodePlex so that you can do this yourself. There are a lot of tables in this model, but we're just going to look at these. The internet sales is the fact table. It's where we have our sales line items. The product table and customer table are what they sound like, and the products have subcategories. So for that first question of listing out the customer sales in a product subcategory would look like this. Very straightforward, very easy. You can accomplish this in many ways with many different database tools. But what if we want to put next to that internet total sales, which is the mountain bike total sales by customer, and we want another column that says, what's the sales in a second subcategory? That's actually not possible to do in this pivot table because of that slicer. The slicer is limiting the entire pivot table to just mountain bikes. So we can't list out, say, helmets next to that. To do that, we would need to add in another subcategory table, which is really just a duplicate of the subcategory table so that we can do something like this and have two subcategory slicers and have two columns that correspond. The first one is mountain bikes in this example. The second one is helmets. But we need to do some tricks within our tabular model and with DAX in order to make this work. And that's what we're going to look at. So look at this other subcategory sales and let's take a look at the actual measure definition for that. And it looks like this. So we have other subcategory sales. And let's just kind of walk through this statement. Calculate essentially says calculate something, and I'm going to play around with the scope a little bit as you do it. And what we are going to calculate is the sum of the sales amount from the internet sales table. That part's really straightforward. But let's look at the, the last part that says use relationship. And we're, what we're doing here is we're turning on an inactive relationship between the products subcategory key that is the subcategory product subcategory key in the product table and the product subcategory key in the subcategory 2 table. That's the duplicate subcategory. So we're turning that on so that we're going to make the Excel pivot table slice our data by that subcategory 2. The all part of this tells the query that I want you to ignore anything that's been selected by the subcategory just for the purposes of this measure. And that's how we can sort of clear the first filter and set the second filter. When we do that, we get this other subcategory sales column. But it's ignoring the selection of mountain bikes. So we get exactly what we want. So that's how we'll do that. And we'll look at that in a minute. Now that third question is, give me the list of customers who have sales in mountain bikes, don't have sales in helmets. This bottom part is just what we went through. So it's calculating the sales for the second uh, subcategory for the subcategory 2. The top part is just calculate the sum of internet sales amount. That will give us the sum of sales amount sliced by mountain bikes by the first subcategory. And the double ampersand is means this and that. And so if you take this together it's saying if the sales in subcategory 1 are greater than 0 and the sales in subcategory 2 are 0 then no purchase equals just one, otherwise it's zero. So we're just setting a flag there. Now let's look at what this looks like to set up. So this is our tabular model design. And in this design, we have the internet sales table, the customer table we talked about, and the two subcategory tables. So that's our 
subcategory 1 will will be choosing mountain bikes from that one and subcategory 2 will choose our helmets from this one if we look at the relationships there's an active relationship to subcategory that's the subcategory we use most of the time and then we we just set an inactive relationship to subcategory 2 its definition is the same but the active box is cleared and that's the relationship that we're turning on when we are calculating the sum for subcategory 2 here's our other subcategory sales that's the same thing we had on the slide and then the no purchase is defined here the same as on the slide when we're in Excel it looks like this so here is our standard query of list out the customers and their sales in the subcategory I choose but if I want to see what the sales are in helmets for these customers I could just flip back and forth but it's just it's too hard to see because the customer list is changing so what I'll do instead is I will choose my other subcategory sales now if I choose that originally you see that it's actually going to list out all of the customer sales so the other subcategory is even bigger than internet total so let's add that slicer We'll scroll down here and choose other subcategory name. Put that over here. Size it. So let's look at our helmet example because we might want to know how many customers have we sold mountain bikes to that haven't purchased a helmet from us. And we can see some of them have purchased a helmet. This one hasn't. That's one we want to identify. This customer has not purchased a bike but has purchased a helmet. And then some of these, if we scroll down, we'll find others that have purchased neither one. Well, that's a lot of information to go through. So let's use that final calculation that we designed. And that was the no purchase flag. So if we turn that flag on, we'll actually have a calculation that will determine that the ones are the ones we're looking for and the zeros are not. And we can very easily then set a filter here so that we will look at our no purchase equals one and that will give us just a list of customers who purchased mountain bikes from us have not purchased helmets from us one concise list and we could take these customer IDs and maybe send a mailer out to these customers only because we think well they have purchased the mountain bike they're in the mountains they need a helmet they should get one from us